Hey guys, Jim Daniker here. I wanted to show you some examples of something I posted about not too long ago, and that is recording keyboards through Neve style mic preamps. And the reason for that is because, especially when you're using virtual versions, like for example, I'll show you here in a minute, the Cherry Audio uh, Memory Moog emulation, which is pretty good. Um, but like a lot of plugins, th there's a little bit of a difference between the virtual version and a real world hardware synth. Um, and you typically want to add some texture and you want to just beef it up a bit. And the Neve uh, preamp is a great way to do that because you're running through transformers and EQ and that just tends to add a little extra special sauce. So I'm going to show you a couple examples, both of hardware synthesizers and software versions, and uh, I'll show you before and after with with the uh, the plugin um, to give you an example of of you know what the differences are. Now, in my case, I do have a hardware Neve clone. Um, the one that I really like for my taste is by Warm Audio. It's a WA two seventy three EQ. It's a stereo. 1073 clone, but with the EQ that's a little bit more like the 1081. Um, and it's got some options and, and features that I really like that even some um, original Neves don't have. And it sounds great. But if you don't have that, um, the version I'm going to show you is the Universal Audio 1081 plugin, which is really, really fantastic. I would put it up against hardware any day. So enough talking. Here we go. So first things first, I'm just going to step through a few uh, examples of different synths, both hardware and software, and um, then I will enable the Neve plugin so you can hear the, the before and after. So here's the Hydra synth. Just a simple little arpeggiated pattern. All right, now I'm going to turn on the Neve. It's with the Neve. Let me bypass it again. Now, you'll notice I put a gain plug in after the Neve, and this is why. If I leave that out of the chain and just enable the Neve, the level just screams. So that's not a fair comparison. Of course, louder is going to sound better. Um, so to try and gain match them, Uh, you know, I added the gain after the Neve because unfortunately the Neve plugin doesn't have a trim control after the uh, the, the gain. And, and here's what's happening. So let me turn on the Neve. Part of what's making that magic is it's modeling the, the input transformer. So when I turn the red knob here, And that's, that's kind of what you want, but you're going to have to put a trim, you know, a, a gain plug in after that. So there you go. That's bypassed altogether. And that's with it. Okay, so moving on. Matrix Brute, Arturia, uh, one of my favorite mono synths. <laughs> Sounds great by itself. Now let's put the Neve on it. Turn it off. Back on. Um, there you go. It just makes everything bigger. And part so here's what I'm doing. In addition to the gain on the plug-in, the preamp gain. Also adding some low end EQ. Just sounds insane. And it'll just a little bit of top end. Now notice something else here. The EQ, typically in a plug-in, you know, digital EQ, it just never sounds good. Um, you turn it up real loud, you know, high, and it's gonna sound harsh. 
but not on the Neve stuff. U UA does a fantastic job modeling these things. And that's, that's what the hardware sounds like. So, turn it off. Back on. Kind of subtle and kind of not subtle at the same time. Uh, Profit Rev 2 by Sequential. Of course, now the, the Neve is on. Bypassed. It's with it. So there you go. One or two more. Roland System 8, one of my favorite. This is my stand-in for Jupiter 8, Juno 106, JX3P, all the classic Roland analog synths. off the Neve. With it. Without it. There you go. Okay, moving on to software. Um, I now have the Cherry Audio Memory Mode, which is the Memory Moog emulation, and this thing is fantastic. Get the plug-in out of the way. I've got this mapped to my Sequential Pro 3 for, for controlling it. Okay, now let me turn the Neve on. Now we're talking. Uh, okay, last one. Um, one of my other favorite synths lately is Free. It's by um, Digital Disco, and it's called OBXD. And I'm actually running two of them at the moment um, for true stereo. I'm panning them completely apart. It's a big old Oberheim fatness. Okay, let me turn off the Neve. Turn it back on. So there you go. Um, you obviously don't want to do this to everything because when you add this kind of thing on a on a synth, especially. You know, especially like a, a bass synth, it's going to hog a lot of space in your mix. You don't want to do that. But for featured things like a synth bass um, or a lead sound or pads, something that um, that you want to have a lot of personality, it, man, this is just one of the best things you can do is just add the... Um, is just add that, that Neve flavor. Nothing else does that quite the same way. So there you go. That is what I was talking about in that post. I hope this gives you some ideas. Uh, again, if you don't have a hardware version, the, the Neve clone, um, the, the 1081 is absolutely fantastic. Um, there's others. I think Waves has one, uh, which is pretty good. But um, in terms of modeling real physical gear, there's very few that are as good as the Universal Audio. Uh, so there you go. Hope that helps. Cheers.